Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy of LA Wave Options. We just finished tonight's Trade Finder Live. We focused on the Federal Reserve, the big Fed meeting tomorrow. Are they going to come out with a 50 basis point rate hike as expected, or are they going to surprise the market with a 75 basis point rate hike? Some even are thinking that because the GDP came in down 1.4% for the first quarter, that the Fed might even be a little more dovish perhaps only go 25 basis points. We're going to talk about all that. And by the way, if you haven't signed up for Trade Finder yet, do so. You can do it right underneath this video. We do it every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. We talk the markets, we look for trading ideas, and we do a live Q&A at the end. Let's take a look. So here's the market, and I wrote this note to our alert subscribers, uh, but here's what I posted uh, yesterday on the low, as you can see, we were a bit away from that 10 day moving average. And if you've watched any of these recordings that I've done in the past, you know the phrase, no security in any time frame gets very far away from the 10 day moving average. And then we rallied into the close yesterday and that's because at the low, uh, we had that separation. We had a little bit of follow through today, nothing too significant as we are moving back up to test 420. 420 was support for quite a while. You can see we kind of churned here for about a week. We did break below it and now we've turned and gone back and now we're testing to see if 420 will indeed act as resistance or can we break back above 420 and call this a false breakout. A lot's gonna depend on tomorrow, big day tomorrow, probably one of the most watched uh, Fed meetings in a very long time. So right now the markets have priced in about a 50 basis point rate hike. So if the Federal Reserve, and there has been rumors, but I don't think this happens, of a 75 basis point rate hike, then I think the market sells hard on that. Um, because if there's going to be one, nobody really expects it to be at the first meeting, maybe over the summer, depending on how things go. Now, there's also some commentary out there where people are thinking, well, you know, we just had the first quarter GDP. We went down 1.4%. So... Uh, we're halfway towards an official recession. Perhaps with that lower economic news, the Federal Reserve won't be quite so hawkish as they've been. Maybe they're a slight bit more dovish. Maybe even they only cut 25 basis point at this next meeting and signal a bunch of 25 basis point rate hikes. I don't think that's likely either. So I don't think either one of the extremes is likely. I think the Federal Reserve is going to toe the line. They're going to raise 50 basis points and they're going to announce their uh, balance sheet reduction. So how does the market react to that? We'll have to wait and see, especially with a market that's right at a support resistance area with the Federal Reserve about to make such an important announcement. Now, as you know, we still have the big zigzag pattern of the downside that takes us down right where this wave five is, right around the 400 level potentially down to 392. And you can see the top of the wave five is at 393. So we have two different um, LA wave Fibonacci patterns giving us roughly uh, the same target. And so here is that big zigzag pattern. And there you can see right down at the very top of the uh, uh, wave five uh, tap, out, tap box, which stands for time and price projection, if you're wondering why it's called a tap box. So that would be an area where the market could look for support. If it doesn't find support then, then it starts getting pretty ugly. If we uh, start to look to see 161.8% extension to the downside, um, but we're a long way from that. We haven't even hit the 100% extension yet. And as I said, a lot depends on what happens tomorrow. So could we get a, a short-term rally? We could. I think the most bullish thing for people to hang their hats on that wanna see the market move back to the upside is the fact that we are starting, although it's not extensive, but we're starting to get some separation between the 10 and the 50 day moving averages, a la what happened over here. When they start to separate, see the 10 day separated from the 50 here and what happened, we rallied up. And then we came down, 10 days separated again, we rallied up. So we're starting to get that separation. So we could get a bit of a short term rally in here <clears throat> before anything significant happens to the downside. So does the Federal Reserve uh, exacerbate that by being a bit more dovish? They certainly would. But 
I would submit that even if they just go status quo, there could be a little bit of a relief rally that they didn't go 75 basis point, that they weren't more hawkish, knowing that the economy is weakening. So that's pretty much it for the S&P. We can take a look at volume. Uh, if you wanted to see that, note that today, much lower volume than yesterday. But yesterday we had early selling and then we had a big reversal. So that higher than average volume was a combination of both selling and the rally. And then today, really not much going on in the terms of, uh, of volume. And I think that's just kind of a lot of, all right, let's wait and see uh, what can happen from this Fed meeting. Everybody knows the things that I just gave you. Those aren't any massive pearls of wisdom. That's really what everybody is watching. Do they surprise either direction or do they just come in uh, with what the market expects and what the market has already priced in? And I think that's the likely scenario. Looking at the Dow, and you can see that the Dow is at support. It hasn't broken it like the S&P did. The S&P broke below that support level at 420, but the diamonds are still there with a doji. Isn't that interesting? to see what happens tomorrow with uh, the chart here, right at a support level with a doji. Could that be telegraphing perhaps a bit of a rally tomorrow? Maybe, um, we'll see. Uh, again, I, I still think the markets head lower. Uh, I, I think that uh, the selling isn't done yet in the last SPY update, if you're watching that, and if you're live streaming on YouTube and you haven't been to our YouTube channel, you can go to YouTube and look at that last video um, where I talked about how expect panic and a really ugly day. And just to be clear, I wasn't talking about that occurring yesterday on Monday. I was talking about before the selling ends, before the selling is over and we've put a bottom in, I think we have a real panic day. We have a real nasty day in the markets with a big spike in the VIX, higher than 35. I just don't think that's a high enough VIX to put a real bottom in the market. So we're working our way down. We broke some below support on the S&P. We haven't here yet. So if we get a little bit of a rally here, I think we're just setting up more downside. I really do. And that the selling uh, isn't fully over until that occurs. That ugly day, massive down day, kind of a thousand point day like we just saw uh, on Friday, with, uh, but with a bigger spike in the VIX. Let's take a look at the Qs. To me, it been one of the best charts out there nearing their wave five target broke below the support level here at 320 and again let me take that line away look at that a perfect doji right on you think everybody's waiting to see what is the federal reserve going to do tomorrow it's doji day uh, every now and then we get those i call them doji days when there's so many different markets uh, that are showing dojis so here we are we broke 320 now we're back up testing it so very similar to the spy chart um, the, the dow chart being a little bit better uh, getting back close to that 10-day moving average so we're sitting just right here um, at this uh, area that was support is now resistance but right on top of it with a perfect doji i think something's going to happen tomorrow uh, regardless of what the Federal Reserve does, I think the market makes some sort of a significant move. I don't know if it's a bounce up. I don't know if it's a sell off. And just remember, here's a point that what happens tomorrow after the Fed meeting usually gets retraced. So normally we get some sort of a movement right on the Fed announcement, and then that movement gets retraced. It's very similar to breaking out of one of our uh, corrective triangles that we talk about in our volatility portfolio all the time is when you break out of a triangle, at some point that breakout gets retraced. Might be immediate, might be down the road, but with the Federal Reserve announcement, it's usually within the next day. So if you get a big move following the announcement, sometimes it gets retraced before the end of the day. Sometimes it's the next day, but it very rarely goes past that. So be real careful. We've been light on our alerts at the beginning of this week. And that was part of the commentary that I sent to our alert subscribers. Um, and that's the reason why. Big Fed meeting coming up tomorrow. And what happens immediately after that, don't get caught up in jumping the gun and go right into placing directional trades. Let it settle out, give it a day. Um, so see if that, uh, whatever happens on the announcement doesn't get retraced and, and settle in. Then you have a better idea of where the market's going from here. And then you can go ahead and 
put on some sort of directional trades. Looking at the IWM, and uh, we noticed that uh, we talked about this last week, we had broken below 190. Uh, we talked about it over the weekend in that SPY update uh, on YouTube. And uh, so now we're back testing that again. So every, every market is right around support resistance. It's just all of them but the Dow broke support and are now testing it as resistance. The Dow didn't really break it. It's just sitting on top of it. So very similar through all of the different markets. And we have this big trading range here between 190 and 210. Heavy put buying on the IWM last week towards the end of the week. So there's uh, some big bets that the IWM is going to go lower. We'll see. We'll see if that plays out um, or if we get some sort of a rally on the news tomorrow. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market is likely going to go and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.